So. Begs the question, top five nips. Uh, oh, yes. That's a great one. Because mm. uh, uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's, I think, is number one uh, or two. Screwball say, also up uh, there. I'd probably go Mina Kimes. And just like that, another Boston radio host comes under scrutiny. Say hello to Chris Curtis, producer at Sports Station WEEI. And um, Fireball. Fireball. Like, Fireball. I'm not taking a tequila. You're right about the McGillicuddy, though, but do you like the purple or the root beer? Let's go back to Curtis's reaction to a racist joke. Watch. Uh, I'd probably go Mina Kimes. And um, Fireball. Fireball. It's like Curtis is seeking affirmation for his terrible jab at ESPN's Kimes. I pose one question. During the break, I remembered why I don't like Bunch of Crunch, which is that when I was young, it would come in a box. The adjective they used to describe the candy was poppable. So uh, I was probably six or seven. I put it in our microwave to pop it, thinking poppable, and I broke the microwave. My parents were upset at me. So then I tried to call Nestle or whatever company makes it and to complain about the usage of the word poppable and threaten a lawsuit. Nice. But I thought they wouldn't take me seriously unless I put on, like, an adult voice. What did the voice sound like? I had to hear it. I tried it in, like, a southern accent, thinking I'd be a southern mom. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Here we go. She's going to descend into the sewage now. Everyone back off. I mean, there's nothing southern about it. <laughs> no, just back off. Let her, let, her, let her sink into the sewer. <laughs> I called and I said, my daughter tried to eat your bunch crunch. And the woman went, ugh. Your daughter. <laughs> and then she laughed at me for like 10 oh. minutes and I'm still really upset about it. And this is the person you want to offend? Front Office Sports would provide some context. During a bit on the radio station's Greg Hill show, the discussion turned to favorite nips or mini whiskeys like Screwball, Dr. McGillicuddy's, and Fireball. But nip is also a slur for people of Japanese descent that was common during World War II. Curtis couldn't help himself on the air. Then he dug a deeper hole. In a pathetic failed attempt at a one-liner, I attempted to bring up Mila Kunis, which was not really that funny, sophomoric and sexist, but for reasons I don't understand, I said Mina Kimes. This is where it takes quite a unique turn. ESPN Sarah Spain would write, when you have to play the I'm sexist card to get out of your I'm racist issue, you're really in the blank. Kimes, a pro, would then do this. When sports reporter Chad Finn of the Boston Globe would report Curtis's I meant me lacunas jargon, Kimes changed her avatar to, well, me lacunas. When hearing the excuse, she also tweeted this meme. Curtis, pictured, is another Boston radio host who has gotten himself in hot water over disparaging racist comments made over the air. Tony Maserati, a local staple in the industry, would be suspended after making racist comments on the air as well. When a co-host was broadcasting remotely from a hotel with two black males behind him, Maserati said, I want to know now who the two guys behind you are, because if I were you, they can't hear us, right? Okay. So I would be careful if I were you because the last time you were around a couple guys like that, they stole your car. This was Tony's reaction to his own remark. The latest incident at WEEI comes five years after the station held sensitivity training following a host's offensive impersonation of an Asian accent. Host Christian Fourier had imitated sports agent Don Yee on air in an exaggerated mocking Asian accent. Advertisers dropped WEEI as a result. The most infamous racist incident at WEEI was when John Dennis compared a zoo's escaped gorilla to minority children who participate in METCO, a state program that buses inner city students to Boston's mainly white suburbs. James D. Coe, formerly of the NFL Network, would also change his avatar to Mila Kunis and write the following. As an Asian American in this industry who has faced racism on and off the job, this latest incident from WEEI really hits home. Considering WEEI has a history of making racist jokes specifically against Asians, I felt it important to use my platform to try and encourage change. That's why until I see Odyssey and WEEI come forward with a public reprimand of Chris Curtis, Matt Harmon and I can't in good conscience continue making content for Odyssey. 
It's a small stand, but something we felt was necessary. The Reset Perception podcast is a top 10 football show in Odyssey's network, and we have truly enjoyed partnering with them. So I'm hopeful something will be done swiftly so we can continue to grow together. Also, miss me with the Mila Kunis thing. Come on, watch the clip. He knew exactly what he was doing and saying. As for Curtis... Tease another dumb idiot on the air who applauds athlete injuries for fun.